All right, folks, so today we're gonna do uh, a gear video. I don't do a lot of these, but usually I try once a year to do uh, basically a pack dump. So we're gonna open up my pack. We're gonna look at the gear that I use regularly. And I'm gonna break this down into a couple of different categories. I'm gonna look at what I have on me every single day. We're gonna look at what basically just kind of lives in my pack and goes with me no matter what I'm doing or where I'm at. And then we're gonna take a look at some of the gear that I use that I kind of take in and out, that I interchange depending on what I'm doing. Um, of course, this is not going to be an extensive uh, list of everything that I use. This is basically just kind of what finds its way in my pack uh, on a pretty regular basis. So with that, let's just dive right in. I'm going to just pull everything out so that I have it here in front of me and then I'm just kind of kind of go through things in those different categories. And I don't, this is not, I just kind of crammed everything in here. I don't have it, uh, this stuff organized at all. <laughs> Throw it in a big pile here. All right, so there's, I'm gonna, there's a couple of little things in here that I'm just gonna leave in and I'll pull those out um, when I get to them. All right, so everyday carry. The things that I have on me every single day, there's only three items. This is why I've never done an EDC video because it would be very short. Um, my Leatherman P4, I have this all the time. This is the same tool that I took on alone. I actually broke the blade in it. Some of you have seen some of the videos where I was working with the blade, what's kind of dangling around. I sent this in, they put a new blade on it, and there was a couple other tools that I had broke uh, in here and they replaced all that sharpened all my blades sent it back to me just like brand new um, this is uh, it's a little bit heavy I don't know what the weight on this is but it's a it's a hunk of steel um, and so if you're you know counting ounces backpacking um, I don't know for me it's worth the weight for somebody else maybe not um, but I use the pliers regularly for cooking I'll use it for this can taking it in and out of the fire um, I have gut skinned and quartered whole elk uh, with just this little blade here that's all you really need it's nice to have a different blade but if this is what you have uh, it will work just fine um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about this because I've talked about it a lot in other videos but this is one of the things that I do have on me every single day The next thing that I have on me, unless I'm getting on an airplane, <clears throat> of course that's the same with the, uh, the Leatherman, is a lighter. 99.9% um, .9 of the time I'm gonna have a lighter in my pocket. Um, they're just convenient to get fire going. If you cut paracord, you can singe the end so it doesn't ravel out. Um, and then the other thing you'll notice about this lighter is I have tape wrapped around it. Now there's a couple of different options you can go with the tape on here. Uh, you could go with duct tape, which has a bazillion different uses. Um, one of the great things about duct tape is if you do find yourself in wet weather, you need to get a fire going, you can take some of that duct tape off, light it on fire, and it'll burn for quite some time, help you get a fire going in wet conditions. The tape that I have on here is actually called Luco tape. It's a really high quality medical tape, and I'll link to this stuff down in the video description. But whereas the normal medical tape just kind of sucks, if you put it on a, a hot spot or a blister and it's in your boot and it gets to rub and it just comes off. Luco tape, this stuff, if you stick it on uh, a hot spot in your boot, it, it'll be there a week later. I mean, this stuff is tenacious. Um, and that's why I have this on here. Not so much for me because I don't, I don't normally get blisters, but if I'm hiking with somebody else that uh, gets a hot spot that's threatening to turn into a blister, take some of this stuff off, slap it on there, and you're good to go. You can protect that hot spot from turning into a blister, which can take somebody out of a hike or out of a hunt. So this is item number two that I pretty much always have on me. 
The third thing that I have on me pretty much all the time, and most of us are the same way, <laughs> is my cell phone. Now, you might be asking yourself, ah, this primitive guy, what the heck's he talking about having a cell phone, phone for? Um, I carry this on me for a couple of different reasons. I carry it pretty much everywhere, even where I don't have cell service, uh, which I spend a lot of time in the backcountry because it takes great photographs. If I need it to take video, I've got, uh, I've got the video capabilities. And the actual, you know, the newer smartphones, this is an iPhone, I don't know what model it is, um, but it takes good video. It takes great uh, slow motion. I use it all the time for tuning arrows and making sure that my form and all that stuff is correct. But then the other thing, the other big thing that I use this for in the backcountry is navigation. Um, I have on this phone, I have an app called Onyx and that's, it's basically a navigation app. It allows me to mark locations. It gives me access to satellite imagery, topographic maps. Um, it's got a GPS. I can find my way around. Um, and I can download and cache maps on here. So when I'm in the back country, I don't have cell service. Uh, I have access to all those maps. Um, very, very useful tool. Now, with that said, these things run out of batteries. If I'm going somewhere that I'm not familiar with, I will have a paper map and a compass with me. So don't be the guy that gets into an area where you're unfamiliar and you might have a chance of getting turned around, your GPS or your cell phone dies and then you're just flat out lost. Don't be that guy. If you're going into an area that you're not familiar with, dense canopy, whatever, easy to get turned around, map and compass all the time. So those are the three things that I have with me on my person pretty much all the time. So now I want to talk about some of the stuff that I keep in my pack that's going to go with me whether I'm backpacking to a high mountain lake in June with the boys or if I'm on some extreme backcountry hunt uh, in the dead of winter. So first of all is the just the pack itself. Um, this is the Striker XL from Kefaru. I'm not sure what the weight on it is. It's not the lightest pack uh, out there of this uh, of this volume, um, but it is well made. It's rugged. It works. Uh, it fits good. Uh, I have the ability to drop the pack away from the frame. I can put an elk quarter or something uh, in between here. If I'm just backpacking, a lot of times what I'll do is take a big dry bag and just stuff a bunch of uh, stuff in there, our dried meals, sleeping bags, you know, stuff like that, and put that in between the, uh, the pack and the frame. And using it like that, I've been out on backpacking trips up to seven days, I think. And typically people would think of this as a day pack, uh, but when you're using it with the, the dry bags like that, I mean, I can use it for extended uh, backpacking trips, no problem. The first thing that I'll talk about that just kind of lives in this pack that's here all the time, never take it out unless I absolutely need it, this little gizmo right here. This is a photon light. Um, it's called Photon Freedom Micro, and it's um, it's got a little watch battery in there. I don't know if you can see that light; it's kind of bright out here. But in in the dark, you pr put, push this thing, turn it on, and it's got a couple of different like intensity settings. Um, if I need if I have a if I need a backup light, this thing is always in my pack, and it works really really well. It's it weighs absolutely nothing. I just kind of keep it in here, attach this little tab here, <clears throat> and if my main headlamp runs out of batteries, I always have that as a backup. So I usually carry a ferro rod with me just in case the lighter's not working, runs out of gas, uh, something like that, maybe I lose it. This thing just kind of stays in the pack all the time. And then again, there's more uh, Luco tape that's wrapped around the end of this thing. Lens cloth, wiping down binocular lenses, camera lenses, I always have cameras with me. Um, alcohol lens wipes, again, same type of stuff. 
hunting license, of course. Finish fishing license if I'm going fishing. <clears throat> and then one of the things I like to carry with me is just some kind of electrolytes. When you're out, uh, especially if the weather's warm, you're hiking hard, you're sweating, electrolytes can't, for me anyway, they're a huge deal. I can really tell in my energy levels when my electrolytes are low versus when I have something with a salt base like this to get those electrolytes back up. Um, if you're interested, these are from a company called Relight. Uh, I like these, they don't have any sugar in them. Uh, some of the other electrolyte mixes that you get access to um, are all, you know, they got a lot of sugar in there and I don't particularly care for that. Um, keeps me up at night if I drink it uh, in the evenings. So that's, let's move to this one. One of the other things that lives in my pack is my headlamp. Uh, this is a Petzl Actic Core. I've had this one for seven or eight years. Uh, works really well. It's got a couple of intensity settings. It's got a rechargeable battery, but then it's also got the option of using three AAA batteries in here. So you could carry a couple of AAA batteries. Um, just as backup in case your uh, your light runs out, but the the battery life on these things is actually pretty doggone amazing. So being a guy that films a lot, um, I've got so this kind of goes with one of the items that um, I interchange a lot. But this is a an attachment for my trekking pole that allows me to put a camera on it. It's got, right now I've got a little uh, a GoPro attachment so I can screw this in there. Um, take this thing and stick it in the ground. This ground is like baked hard right now so it doesn't really stick very well. But normally, if the ground is not like a brick, you can stick this in there, put a GoPro. It's gonna fall over. Um, use it for filming, use it for taking photographs, um, any of that stuff. And I'm going to talk more about these trekking poles in a minute, so I'll refrain for right now. But uh, there's a couple of different attachments that you can get to go in these things. So put this back in the pack. And then one other kind of useful item that I just leave in my pack all the time is just a, a, a length of uh, surgical tubing. Um, I mean, the, the uses for this thing are limited basically by your imagination. You can use it as a straw. You could use it for a tourniquet if you needed to. Um, I bind things together with it all the time. If I'm carrying sticks or something like that, you can wrap this around there. Uh, I can use it to tie things to my pack. Um, you can cut sections off of it, light it on fire, and it'll burn for a pretty good little while. So, I don't know, it doesn't weigh anything, and I just kind of stick it in there and, and leave it. My water bottle. Uh, I just use a Nalgene for carrying water. I've used a bladder in the past, and I just don't like water bladders, primarily because they just get funky, and they just get this, like, slimy nastiness inside of them. Um, a water bottle, I can just take a, uh, a bristle brush or something like that, uh, swish it around inside, clean this thing out. Um, if I'm out in the back country for a while and it starts to get a little grimy, I just take a pine bowel, stick in there, and, and wash it out like that. Um, but that's what I use for carrying water. Let's see. Another thing that lives in my pack is paracord. Again, this is one of these items that the, the uses for paracord are infinite. Um, I use this thing for stringing up um, high lines for tents or for guying out tents. I use it for tying, like if I, uh, if I am packing out elk antlers or something like that, I can use it to kind of tie things up. Um, I use them for hanging quarters in the woods. I use them for when I'm uh, quartering a big animal. Um, 
oh, I don't have my, uh, I usually have a couple of carabiners that are attached to this, like uh, lightweight uh, black diamond carabiners. And I don't know why they're not on here. Um, they're usually on here. But I'll use this in conjunction with the carabiners to create a block and tackle so I can move big animals around um, to help with uh, skinning and quartering because I'm most of the time I'm by myself and I need a little bit of uh, help, uh, a little bit of leverage to get those animals moved around. So a knife sharpener, this is the, uh, I think it's the, called a field sharpener from uh, WorkSharp. Like this thing, it's got a couple of different grits on there for sharpening your blades. Uh, got a coarse grit, fine grit, and then it's got a ceramic on it. And finally, it's got a little uh, stropping leather strap right here. You can really touch up those blades, get a real fine edge on there. It's got uh, removable, if you're a bow hunter and you hunt with uh, screw-in heads, it's got little broadhead wrenches in here, which is kind of cool. Uh, and if you take this one apart, you could fit some other stuff in there. Fishing hooks, fishing line, uh, tinder, you know, whatever. Throw some things in there. Really handy little sharpener. I don't think they cost, I don't know what they cost, but I don't think they're too expensive. This kind of lives in my pack all the time as well. And I think the last thing that I have with me all the time, no matter where I'm going or what I'm doing, is this little um, Garmin InReach Mini. This thing is a satellite t transmitter. It's a, I can text with it no matter where I am on the planet. Um, and this one, although you can use it, standalone just by itself it's it's really made to use in conjunction with your cell phone i can bluetooth to this thing i can text i can receive texts and so although i don't use it often most of the time it's just off and attached to my pack if i get into a bad situation um, where i absolutely need help i've always got this thing and i can send a text and get help coming my way So these little, so the little InReach minis, I don't know what the cost is. I bought this years ago, maybe 450, something like that. But then they've got uh, monthly subscriptions based on how much you plan on using the thing. So they've got like a base subscription, which is maybe like 10 texts or something like that, which is, I don't know what we charge, what they charge us, maybe 20 bucks a month or something um, on up to, you know, higher higher packages where you get more text um, but if I go over my text and I always do then it's like 99 cent per text or something like that I don't remember ah, gotta adjust that knee oh, sucks getting old damn <sighs> now I'm gonna start kind of working through the rest of this stuff so first thing is my little can here. This is a bot, it's from Vargo Outdoors. Uh, it's a titanium bot, which is a little bit more expensive. I think they sell a stainless steel version of this as well. Um, it's got, supposed to have anyway, a, an O-ring that goes around here so you can actually seal it up, you can carry water in it. I had the O-ring on here for like 10 years. I let the kids use it one time and they burn it up. So I, I stick this thing in the fire all the time and what I would do is take the O-ring off, put it on my wrist, and then just use it for putting it in the fire. But inside this thing, I carry just uh, a little MSR pocket rocket and one of these small fuel canisters fits right inside that, that bot perfectly. I carry this thing uh, especially during late season a lot. Like if I'm out on a late season uh, elk hunt or something like that, I carry these little pocket rockets uh, because I like making hot tea, uh, like uh, maybe maybe make a cup of ramen or something like that. But although I could do that with just a fire, you can't beat the convenience of one of these little things just to get things going and going quickly. So another thing that I use quite often are gators. This, uh, these are a pair of the Traverse 
early season lightweight gators they're not waterproof uh, but what they are useful for especially i use these in early season because around here we have a, a grass we have a couple of different grasses that are bad about getting in your socks uh, getting in your the inside of your shoes in the in the cloth part and although i have boots on right now early season a lot of times i like to hike in just tennis shoes and if you walk through that grass the seeds will get stuck in your socks and they get all in the inside of your shoes and they poke you and it's like i've had shoes and socks that were just absolutely ruined by cheatgrass seeds because once those things get in there you can't get them out um, and they're they're very very annoying and so having a pair of gaiters to go over your pants legs over the top of your shoes helps to keep that stuff out of there also early season they're great for keeping ticks out of your pants late season i'll switch these out for a different set of uh, gaiters that are a little bit taller a little bit more rugged um, and also waterproof and if you've watched some of my elk hunting videos in the past you probably have seen that if i'm walking through snow or something i'll have those higher gaiters on helps keep snow out of the bottom of your uh your britches from coming up into your pants like that so let's talk water filters for a minute um i don't always carry a water filter and i've talked about this in the past uh, a lot of the places that i go hiking and hunting are high elevation uh, mountain streams and I personally feel very comfortable just drinking straight out of the stream uh, of course I know that there's a lot of you out there that don't uh, don't want to take that risk and if you're if you're not comfortable doing that of course carry a water filter with you like I said I don't always do it when I'm in an area where I'm uh, not sure about the quality of water I'll carry usually one of these two this is a platypus this is more like a base camp type system you got a big bag and a, a hose that runs through a filter to a, a bag on the ground and so it's great to fill up and just kind of keep at camp uh, for uh, for refilling stuff i think these are two liters a piece really really good system i use this all the time if i'm out camping with some other person um, and we're going to set up a base camp i'm not pro i'm not going to carry this with me when i'm out hunting uh, the one that I carry with me uh, when I'm hunting or backpacking by myself is uh, just this little whisper light. What is this called? What's the model of this? I don't know what the model of this one is. Um, no, it's not. It's a, it's a MSR, whisper lights, the old stove I used to have. So it's a pump style stove. What am I talking about? get that water out of there so this is a pump style filter uh, and you can fill up one of these now jeans pretty doggone quickly uh, with this thing they make smaller ones that are just a hand squeeze which I don't uh, I don't have one of those I've got a, a friend that's got one and they work pretty nice but those little MSR uh, water filters are come in really handy I'm not sure what the weight on that is it's pretty light though Um, if, if I am going backpacking and I need to cut firewood or if I'm going into an area where I'm going to need to build a brush blind or something like that, uh, these little silky saws come in real handy. You guys have seen me use these before. I took a, a much larger version of this onto, uh, the Alone Show, but this is a silky Gomboy 210 super super handy little saws very very sharp be careful with these things you'll cut your finger off but you can make short work of small diameter firewood or building a brush blind uh, with these little saws so if i'm out backpacking in june we're just going up to a high mountain lake of course i don't need game bags for something like that but if i am hunting whether it's down south chasing pigs or deer down in south florida or way up in the mountains somewhere i'm always going to have game bags and a couple of knives with me uh, these are uh, the large game mob pack from argali really high quality game bags um, 
The, this is a brand new set. I don't think I've used these before, uh, but I've got other ones and they're many, many uses under there uh, on those game bags. They're, I'm not sure what they're made out of, but uh, it's a really durable uh, material that it's made out of. It's fairly lightweight. Um, and this is going to help to keep your meat clean. It's going to help keep the flies and bugs off of them. Um, keep the birds from pecking them, pecking stuff. And then in this pack also, I've got a little caping knife also from Argali. So I'll stick this back in there. I always have game bags with me uh, when I'm out hunting. And then of course, to go along with that game bag, there's a knife in that pack, but then I've also got uh, another knife. I usually like to carry a couple of different blades with me when I'm, uh, when I'm out hunting although I don't need it, it's nice when you're going through an elk and you dull one blade just to be able to pick up another one and keep going rather than stopping in the middle of things, taking time to sharpen your knife uh, before you keep going. This one uh, was made by uh, Tyler Wilkins, North Mountain, North Mountain Knives, North Mountain Blades. I'll link to that too in the uh, video description down there. All right, so I had mentioned these trekking poles before. This is something that if I'm hiking with a pack, 99% of the time I'm gonna have trekking poles with me. Now, a lot of you guys ha that don't have experience with trekking poles, I hiked for years and years without trekking poles. And once I finally got a good set of trekking poles, like, man, makes a huge difference. Um, well worth the wait of carrying these things, especially when you're going downhill. Going downhill with a loaded pack is hard on my knees. This allows me to use not only my legs, but my upper body as well. It's much easier on my knees, especially if I have an elk quarter in this thing. Guys, these things will save your knees. Um, I use them for going uphill uh, as well. If I'm climbing hard, uh, really putting out a lot of effort, uh, using a uh, pair of trekking poles is really gonna help. Of course, if you're on frozen side hills or something like that, these things are going to help you keep you upright. Um, these are the Carbon X, uh, again from Argali. They're carbon fiber, uh, pretty lightweight. And then, of course, you saw the feature here earlier where you've got this little tab. You can put uh, accessories in there. I had the camera mount in there. Um, they've also got a little... Um, mount for your binoculars you can put your binos up there use them to uh, use that to make you more stable they've got a little shooting y in here so you can make this thing into a shooting stick um, but i really like these trekking poles a lot and then the last thing that I pretty much always have with me, uh, I'll leave my binoculars if I'm just going for a hike, but even, even if I'm just going for a hike, most of the time I'm gonna have my binoculars with me because there's always cool stuff to see in the woods. Um, Vortex just came out with this new uh, bino harness here. I'm gonna just go ahead and put this thing on so you can see how it works. They've gone through a couple of different iterations of their, uh, oops, of their bino harnesses. Uh, some of them I didn't, I wasn't super fond of, but this one seems like it's going to work pretty well. I like the way that this one's laid out. Um, I can use it with one hand if I have my have one hand on my bow. I can get my binos out, use them like that, and then pop that right back in there. It's really secure, it holds it tight to my chest. I like that. One of the ones that I was using previously, the attachment point was too low on the front and it would kind of flop away from my chest. I wasn't real fond of that, but I like this one. This one, uh, I think they did a good job with the design on this. Um, I've talked about binos in the past. <clears throat> binos are one of those things that Good, binocul good glass is expensive. Um, these are the Razor UHDs from Vortex. I can't remember what the cost of these are. They're like, I don't know, 1200 bucks or something like that. They, you know, you can get a cheaper pair of glass. Um, 
300 bucks, 350, 500. This is one of those things that if you can afford it, getting good glass makes a big difference. Um, if you're spending a lot of time on a hillside looking through these things, if you're using a lower quality optics, after a while you can start getting a headache. Um, and then the other big thing is with a good quality optic, and it, you know whatever, whatever brand you are a fan of, um, if you can get their higher end uh, glass, the low light capabilities or the, the performance in low light there's a big difference between the low end and the high end and that's something you can't really understand or get a feel for if you're just in the store and you're looking from one end of the store to the other you need to re to, to really understand the difference you need to be out at low light but with these versus a lower end pair during those crepuscular hours when a lot of the animal activity is happening um, it's a you there's a big difference in how in the detail that you can make out so I can look at an opposite hillside with a good pair of glass when it's just kind of starting to break day and you start to get that gray light and I can tell oh yeah that's an elk or that's a stump or whatever whereas with a lower uh, quality glass you you're kind of still in that you know you're un, uh, undecided I guess uh, it can make it a little bit harder to tell what you're looking at um, and a lot of times just those few minutes can make a big difference in whether or not you can pull off a stalk or not. So you can start making that plan for what you're going to do to get close to that animal or whatever. I think that's it. I think that's everything that I was going to talk about today. So uh, if you guys have questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer uh, whatever I can. But I think I covered everything pretty well. And again, I'm going to link to... I'm gonna try to link to everything that I can down in the uh, the video description, and then over on my website at twistedstave.com, I have links to a lot of this stuff as well. So, so one last thing I totally spaced um, is my emergency kit, and I don't have it in here because I had my pack. I had a, I was loading rocks and stuff into this thing here a little while back and carrying them. I took everything out. Emergency kit. Um, Anywhere I'm going where there's a possibility of me getting stuck and having to stay out overnight, I will have a little emergency kit in there. That's got a super, uh, super sized trash bag that I can either make a poncho with, I could cut it apart, make a, an emergency shelter. Um, I've got my ferro rod in here. What else do I have in there? I've got like uh, emergency medical supplies, gauze, band-aids, uh, things like that in there. I'm going to go over, since I didn't do that on this video, I'm going to have to, I'll probably make another video where I talk specifically about that stuff. So if you had, if you're questioning like where's his emergency supplies or his medical stuff, I do carry that stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have it with me here. So another video. Peace.